Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be checking out the Hollybro Kakute F4 flight controller. Now I thought I've ordered the all-in-one flight controller with the VTX but it turns out that I actually got the normal F4 flight controller. So this is actually the second time I'm doing this video because I did not notice until actually I opened it up and I just started taking a look at it. Now let's go ahead and open this one up together. So and again this is the normal F4 flight controller. There's two versions of the VTX. One that's an all-in-one flight controller and one just a normal flight controller. And this is the all in one, this is the normal flight controller. So as you can see here, we are greeted with the uh, this paper here that says to be careful removing the SMA connection here off the MMCX port. And I believe this is due to some people possibly ripping off the MMC port. And uh, that's why they would add such a thing. That's what I would do if this was my product also. All right, so let's go ahead and take this guy out. I mean, it's very nice packaging, but I would have like it also if they went with cheaper packaging and kept the overall price down quite a bit because this is around $64 right here. So it's kind of on the expensive side to be honest. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we get our wire for our VTX and they are silicone, so that's very nice. So it is A4 wire, so I believe you know, you'd know you have your smart port, okay, well, video, smart port, and the uh, we have our uh, power lines here, which is the ground and the positive, so that's good. Let's put this guy to the side. They do give us a heat sink and this heat sink does have double side tape on the bottom which is which actually would go to the vtx here now i do highly recommend you add this possibly have some overheating issues but then it just never hurts to keep your vtx cool so that's good and done there now the vtx is a 5.8 gigahertz obviously 7 to 24 volts 7 to 42 volts sorry about that so we can run, run up to a 6s which is pretty good possibly even more and it's a 285 to a 600 milliwatt selectable uh, VTX, so that's pretty awesome. Um, that's all I can really say right now, to be honest about it. There's nothing else. So we have a button here, we have a microphone, so it does have microphone support, which is very good. Now, you know, just looking at it, and before we go any further, it's missing a nylon screw. Now, it's not a big problem, it's not an issue at all, but it is kind of annoying, to be honest. But that's just me nitpicking, you know. For, to be honest, you know, for, for a price this much, I, I, at least, you know, not miss a screw. All right, so let's go ahead and take this apart and take a look at the flight controller here. So before moving on, let's check some of the hardware for the flight controller that also came in the goodie bag. So we do have our washer and our nuts for our SMA port. So if we wanted to connect it to our frames, we could go ahead and do that. So that's good and done there. We have some extra double-sided tape and this goes to the gyro and I'll get into that in a little bit. And we also have an extra spare ribbon cable for the gyro in case you burn it. And there's a possibility that you might burn this with the soldering iron. All right guys, so now let's take a look at the flight controller. Now it's a very nice flight controller, it seems very good, it seems fairly light also. And as you can see, it has a gyro, um, basically an external gyro which is soft mounted on the board itself. Now this is a sensitive gyro, it's not the super cool, loving, um, flexible gyro. This gyro is the one that's very picky, I believe. So this is the ICM 20. 689 gyro and it's running over the SPI protocol so it's taking its full advantage of the full speed here. Now I've had previous experience with the whole gyros being soft mounted on the board themselves however this seems a little bit more fragile than what I have used before and the ones that I've used before are the Airbot, uh, the, the Airbot Omnibus and the, the V2s or the, the corner, the Omnibot corner and the No X32. However theirs was a little bit different. The, the gyros come in a plastic box where the gyro is suspended in some kind of silicone gel which is fairly protected however I still did manage to ruin it so this is not even protected this is you know it's just out in the open and um, it's to be honest a bit scary and um, I could totally see myself damaging it but I mean maybe it's performance absolutely beautiful and it's very nice to give you three however if you I believe if you're planning on to go using this out in a very cold cold weather uh, for example, you know, anything probably below 4 degrees centigrade Celsius, uh, you will have possible issues with this foam freezing or just losing its stickiness. And I've had that happen with a bunch of double-sided tape, as well as zip ties get ruined in that kind of cold. So that's something to take note of. This might not be a good one for, for cold weather, but I am going to be building it on one of the next videos right now. And we are going to actually test this guy. Uh, in the cold weather that's that's my goal with this i will probably even conform will code it but we're gonna first some run it on some cold weather without rain and see how well that holds up 
All right, so let's go ahead and start with the pads here. So let's just check its orientation. So we do have the arrow up, that's good. We have the USB on the side, that's super awesome. So let's just go ahead and see if it's beta flight orientation. There's M1, which is motor one, correct? M2, yes. M3, correct. M4, correct. Okay, so it's perfect beta flight orientation if it's stuck in just like this. So that's awesome. Now let's go ahead and see how we would wire this guy. So as we can see, let's just start with the, let's start with motor one here. We'll start from the bottom right here. So as you can see here, we have ground and motor three, which is awesome because now this flight control is allowing you to ground your ESC. So if you're into that, you can go ahead and do that and they provide you a special pad for that, which is right there. Uh, however, you could ground it anywhere, but I'm just saying it's making it nice and easy and clean for you so you can keep your ground and your ESC signal wrapped together to reduce noise. Now I've not tested that, so I don't really know if that really helps or not, but in theory, it should help. And as you can see next to it, we have the RSSI pad. So if you're running some kind of RSSI, you can go ahead and do that. And this is, I believe this is SP is smart port. So this is a smart port. This is going to be used for something. Maybe your receiver's telemetry and all that kind of crazy stuff. So here we have T3 and R3, which would be TX3 and TRX3, which is UART3. So that's okay. That's good and done. Five volt ground. And um, so I believe this would possibly be the one that has the inverter for the S bus because it's next to a five volt and a ground. And I don't see any video in and video out from here. So that seems logical. We will go ahead and test this once we build this guy to make sure where the hardware inverter is for the S bus protocol. Now, as you can see, like I said, mentioned before, we have five volt right there. We have ground 3.3 volt, which is for a spectrum receiver, motor one and ground for motor one, the ESC. So that's good. Uh, here we have the battery input, so it would have take the battery, you know, input to power up this guy. So it takes basically raw voltage here. This can be good and this can be bad if it's taking raw voltage. Because if it's taking raw voltage, uh, we can have issues with noise into the OSD. And, um, you know, actually I'm going to make a noise test on this guy and it'll be in the next episode. Uh, so we can kind of see what goes on there. So we'll power it off a 5 volt regulator or some kind of regulator off a PDB. And then we'll also do a test where we power off directly from the battery on a very crappy ESC, which is hella noisy. And we'll be doing that very soon on possibly next episode. And here, as you can see, we have a current sensing pad. So if you, your PDB or whatever had some kind of current output, uh, you can go ahead and stick it right there and get your current reading. So that's nice. Now, if we go up here, obviously we have the USB, five volt LED in ground. So this would power up some kind of LED. This would be the LED signal. And what's so cool about these LED signals, you can route them to whatever you want in the resource, um, in the CLI resource in Betafly. So that's cool. And here we have a buzzer. And up here in the corner, we have ground and M2, which is motor two. That's awesome. Motor four and ground, pretty basic. This is for motor four, the motor four ESC. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and start from the bottom here. Now, as you can see here, we have the boot pin. So that's nice. Uh, this is kind of the standard now. I, I like these buttons more because they don't have a high probability of breaking off because I have broken many, many uh, buttons that are, you know, like for example, on the Maytag VTX, I've broken those buttons easily. So this is very nice to see. I really like this kind of button here. All right, so let's go ahead and check these guys out. So here we have R6 and T6, which is would be UART6. We have the RX6 and TX6. But just to reduce, you know, space, they removed the X and just left it R6 and T6. So don't let, it, don't let that fool you. It's very simple. 5 volt ground video out. So video out is where your uh, video signal would go to your VTX. So VO is video out where it goes to your VTX. And here we have motor 6. They even give us a spare motor 6 pad, I believe. Or am I misreading it? Yeah, M6. So motor 6. So that's good I guess but where's motor 5 it's okay who cares and uh, here we have 5 volt and this is video in it's very difficult to read it but this is video in this is the yellow wire that would come from your camera and then it'll pop through the OSD because this thing has OSD video out straight to your VTX and you, you can see here we have a ground another 5 volt so that's very nice however the only thing that's kind of confusing me here is this one powered by 5 volt no but this one's actually powered by 7 to 42 volts so this will have to take power from the battery and there is no you know raw battery output from this guy so this guy would possibly take it from the vtx or directly from the battery i mean from the pdb or directly from the battery so that's something to take note of you can't power it off a 5 volt uh pad here because this takes 7 to a 20, 42 volts so it's a, it's a hv type uh, uh what 
VTX here. All right, so that's all good and done. Now this gyro, you know, it's nice. The foam is pretty good. Um, however, you know, I can only say so much until we actually go ahead and test it out. Seems nice. The board looks absolutely clean. It does have the Kakute markings and all that kind of crazy stuff on it. Uh, it's an F4 processor and here's the Betaflight OSD. We see some sort of filtrations going on, but you know, we'll figure those out soon. Hopefully the, v the, the, what is it? The, hopefully the gyro has some sort of filtration also. Um, overall it looks clean, it feels very light actually. And um, you know, there's really nothing else much to say other than testing it. And that's what we were gonna be doing on the next episode. So I'm gonna go ahead and start setting up my environment here to do the noise testing on this guy see how well he does and then after that we are possibly gonna depending on the testing results we'll see what kind of build we'll make with him such as a noisy build or a pretty decent build that we're gonna enjoy in the winter and um, hopefully we have this build also go up for a giveaway and I'm planning on giving away a lot of builds that are upcoming to my patreons as well as my youtube subscribers so make sure you stay tuned and uh, especially when I announce the winners and uh, it'll be pretty interesting and pretty fun. So overall, I mean, it's nice. I mean, I see an issue is if you rip this uh, MMX port, it's not that hard if you rip it off unless the, the, as you can see here, it's kind of pins. So it's easy to fix if you are left with a couple pins that are still routed with the traces. I mean, if you didn't rip the traces off, you should be totally fine. You can easily fix this with, with even this guy right here. You just cut this guy and just figure out how to set it up. It's very simple. So if I ever do break that, we will go ahead and make a video on it. And it should be pretty simple. And overall, you know, I'm not really a big fan of the external gyros. Because of my previous experience, I've actually burnt two gyros on the AirBots. And which is why I have not used them. And um, hopefully this one will have a different, you know, outcome. But it is a very delicate and very precise kind of... A flight controller you have to take your time working with this guy you don't want to bet burn this with the uh, soldering iron you don't want to plug it in backwards and um, you just have to take very good extra good care of this because you know a normal flight control also let's just say some for some reason it got wet okay but it's obviously off it's okay let it dry it'll be totally good but the wet the moisture will also is is gonna affect the little sponge double-sided tape that's holding the uh, the gyro in place which can be bad and can be good. I mean it can it can't be good It could be okay, or it could be bad. That's also something to take cons consideration of and um, Yeah, I hear a lot of good things about this and hopefully it'll prove itself. So i um, very excited and um, we'll see how this plans out and well, that's it guys So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, stay tuned on the next episode. We will actually Do some hardcore stress testing on this guy see how well he performs and uh, see how he stacks up. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And just be careful, take your time choosing this product because they both look alike, the AIO and the normal one. Cause I actually thought I got the AIO, but I didn't, but it's okay. Well, uh, we'll figure something out for this guy. And that's it guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I uh, will see you next time. See you guys, take care.